I had mixed feelings about the Max launch. I mean, it is a very promising platform, especially for first time SFF builders, but the product availability, the pricing, all that's been tough because of the general freight and logistics issues, which uh, have led to a higher product cost. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to make one, sort of. Let's make a Max. Welcome to Machines More. It won't be quite the same thing and I'll discuss some of those differences today, but hey, short of gray paint, you almost have everything you need in your standard NR200P to make a max case. If you're familiar with the NR200P, the out of box way to mount a 240 is at the bottom of the case with a vertical GPU. It can be done with special units like the Be Quiet Pure Loop AIO that we tested previously, but with most units, it's not going to be an optimal orientation because it places the pump block at a position higher than your radiator. Next, you're limited to a 240 because at the bottom of the case, it's not cut out for a 280. And yes, with some slight mods, you can fit one in there, but those vents, they're going to be blocked off. So you might as well just run a 240 there, right? On the Mac side of the lineup, it's a really cool case, but the motherboard is shifted pretty low to accommodate the top rat and the fan combo. You are then limited to a slim 120 millimeter fan directly under the motherboard. And some of you I know have asked about a board like this mini DTX Crosshair Impact 8, which physically does not work well with the case. Also right now the Max is still a package only deal. So even though the components are perfectly fine, you might have an AIO and an SFX power supply already. So in order to alleviate those concerns today, we're going to make a sort of Max case here with the regular NR200P. And we're gonna be doing that by inverting or flipping the case upside down. I've cut the mods on this build to a minimum, but there will still be a little bit of cutting and grinding. And so as long as you're somewhat handy with a Dremel and you have access to a 3D printer, I think you should be good to go. All right, first off, you're gonna need the NR200P and you're gonna need the rad panel and the riser cable. It's a PCIe 3.0 riser cable, so it's not quite as ideal as the 4.0 riser cable that comes with the Max. So if you have a 4.0 compatible board, you might want one. So I'll leave a 10 centimeter one down below. Uh, if you look at the horizontal bars of the NR200, they're identical at the top and the bottom. So once we flip the case upside down, we can swap the top and the bottom panels. So that is of course gonna introduce some other problems. So let's talk about the hard mod stuff first. We're going to remove those IO components. The front panel IO stuff just unscrews and you'll see a few posts there. And when you flip the front cover upside down, that three of those are gonna interfere. So my solution was to cut them off. Now don't proceed with the assumption that this is fully reversible, but I did keep the posts that I cut off with a Dremel cutting wheel and you can use JB Weld or another epoxy to reattach those in the future if needed. And with a few washers, you can reattach the front IO connector uh, to the same position if desired. For those two, I just cut them off. I ground the cut smooth and then I just clean it up with a wire brush. For the shorter post that connects to the front audio uh, IO, I just ground it off and you'll notice that the hole is still all the way through. So you can easily reattach it with a longer screw if you ever wanna reverse the process. And that is all the cutting you really need to do for this mod. The next issue we'll have to deal with now is the position of the front IO panel. And there's really nowhere to attach it and you kind of will want a power button. So what I did was I designed and I made a few prototypes to test. Now this one that I'm showing here was the rough draft, but it works uh, for the current revision, the file I'll share the position of the cutout hole for the cables is in a better spot for hiding them. And this one just pops in. And I tapped out the pilot holes to 632, so the original screws will work just fine. I'll be uploading the files to Thingiverse. Uh, th there's one with pilot holes and one without, so check it out there. Uh, one thing I would ask is please subscribe to the channel because it really makes a difference. All right, so after we flip the top and bottom panels later, you can then test the fit. Uh, the one thing to make sure prior to tightening down the screws is that the travel on the power button is correct. Otherwise, you won't have the proper feedback for toggling it. There's going to be some variation from case to case. So if you are concerned about the perfect fit, I would just print the one without the holes and then drill the holes in the exact correct spot based on your case. And uh, that should put you in a, a perfect spot. 
With that sorted out, we can now leave this panel out because it will make the build a little bit more accessible when that area is not blocked off. All right, so next up, you'll pop off the bottom and the top panels and you can remove the rubber grommets on the top cover because you won't be using that for the toolless fan mounting. You can remove the case clips and switch them to the other side. Now the new bottom, both panels uh, should fit into place nicely, but just make sure everything works fine. A lot of folks have removed that top cover mesh and have just used the top covers holes to attach a 240. But personally, I always felt that it's not flexible enough in terms of the position. You're also limited to a 240 and then the panel, well, it's hard to clean. So while you could do that, I don't recommend it. Now we're gonna use this included rad panel that is otherwise not really used in the NR200P when you set it up with a glass panel. And uh, I did a mod in my dual rad custom loop video that involved drilling and tapping holes to attach this to the original top. But there is a mod free approach I'll share here. And you'll notice that the stock rad panel can actually slip into place uh, at the old bottom uh, quite well. And if you remove the top bar and just slide the panel in, it can actually hang in that space quite well although it is gonna move around a little bit. So what you'll want to do is secure it down with a few zip ties and the holes are a bit tight. So don't feel too guilty if you need to use some tweezers to pull your tweezers through. If you're doing a 280, it's a good idea to attach the rad plate to the rad first and then slide them both in together since your screw holes will be inaccessible. And uh, then from there, you can use the zip ties that you'll need to cinch it all down. You'll notice that I'm using the Mini DTX Crosshair Impact 8 to show the test fit here. And although it's not a great board for a build in this case because of this Sodem riser card, at least in our project, this board itself will actually fit. With a 280, however, even though you can get everything to fit the audio module at the bottom of the board, it does force the rat out too much and the top panel will not close. So it's a little bit better to use a 240 for this board. And the top panel will not close just due to the geometry of the panel and how it interferes with one of the clips on the cover. But uh, physically, actually, it's, it's all good there otherwise. The add-on cart is the other issue then because the riser cable angles upwards. Uh, you won't be able to make it all fit and one potential solution would be to just use a longer riser cable or you could just use this board without the card which is a pity because both your m.2s are installed in this uh, riser card so while you could make it work it's not ideal for this test build i'm just going to be using the same board and cpu that the max was tested with it's my uh, go-to for thermal testing the b550 itx and 3700x combo and with that it 280 works perfectly fine but I am opting uh, for this build for a really good 240 though. And that's the PL240 Flux that you should see retail availability any day now. And uh, just to get the fans to all match, I slapped on a pair of NFA 12 by 25s. Now I tested a few ways, but the tubing set up this way was the most reasonable uh, coming out the rear of the case. The Max has a long, long set of tubes, which allows the unique routing that it has. And with an off the shelf AIO, it may not reach well unless you do it this way. So quick note on fan orientations. The primary goal of this build is for display with the glass panel. After all, there is a perfectly fine mesh panel orientation for it, an AIO and a better GPU orientation uh, with a regular NR200 setup. So you're, you're gonna wanna use this with the glass panel and uh, you're gonna run the top and bottom fans going the same direction to balance airflow. So you're either gonna do top intake or bottom exhaust or bottom intake and top exhaust. And we'll get to that configuration choice in a bit. One thing is if the bottom fans are gonna be exhausting, make sure you use grills over them since they are going to be quite close to the GPU's power supply cables and also the AO tubes. So with all that done, everything else is standard in our 200 build process. Just make sure there's good cable management under that power supply. Well, I guess now it's on top of that power supply and uh, run those front panel IO cables back in with the panel and uh, hook them all up. Then you can attach the GPU now. Now just pop that riser cable in and then you can hook up the GPU power cables and then put the cart into the hanger and attach the screws on the card's hanger. Make sure they are tight since that actually is gonna be your main source of structural support for the card now and also tighten down that hanger too. At this point, you can pop the riser cable onto the card. 
Now, one quick note on graphics cards, the spacing off the board isn't that much different compared to the Max. Uh, they're both about eight centimeters or so off the face of the board. So if you have a two and a half, uh, 2.7, two point whatever card, you're fine. If you have a true three slot card, meaning one that needs an actual three expansion slots at the back of the case, and I would cut out a bit more of the case opening there with some tin snips. And uh, you'll notice that the hanger has a screw hole for that third slot anyway. One thing you can do is switch the clips for the side panels, and that way your panels will now open the normal way. And you know, just pop those panels on and your inversion is complete. One of my favorite IPAs and uh, quite aptly named here, but hey, before we crack this open and have that celebratory drink, let's take a quick look at the case build, uh, the thermals and a few differences here between the Max. Now for CPU only, because of the noise profile of the NFA 12 by 25s uh, versus the stock 280 fans and the Slim Noctuas, for the same noise level, we can actually run them on the radiator a little bit faster at 1550 RPM and still end up in a significantly better thermal position compared to the Max's 280 fans. And uh, part of this gap is the excellent cold plate and pump of the PL240 Flux. But just due to the difference in AIOs and case fans, it's about three, three and a half degrees with our overclocked 3700X. It's not quite apples to apples in terms of the comparison, but at the same time, you have a budget for a great cooler when you do this mod uh, versus buying the Max off the shelf. And you, you, know, you kind of totally can get a cooling solution like this if you wanted. In our combo stress test, the CPU is running with a lower locked voltage. Still at a high all-core clock here. Exact same setup as the Max that we tested. For intake, there's a sizable gap for the inverted mod on both the CPU and the GPU. For the most part, on the GPU, the difference comes down to the geometry of a 240 radiator versus a 280. So with a 240, less of that warm radiator exhaust is getting placed into the path of the GPU fans. So the card itself it's less susceptible to the impact of the CPU's cooling. And the CPU is performing much better due to the higher airflow in the case. And as you can see, there's more of a delta compared to the max here, since the more streamlined fans do allow uh, a better airflow and uh, exhausting the hot ambient air. And that this is a lot more important right now because the inside of the case is getting hotter from a high powered card like the 325 watt 3080 here. When we add in the top radiator as exhaust, we still see the same CPU thermal benefit, but this is the flip side of the geometry of a 280 versus 240. With a 280 in the max, the radiator fans are actually helping the car cool by pulling some air into that uh, GPU fan's path. And the fact that we saw less of an impact on the GPU with the inverted mods 240 when the radiator was set up as an intake means that uh, it also helps less when it's set up as an exhaust. You'll see quite a bit of a difference in the CPU temps between the two configurations with a tiny difference on the GPU. And we knew this already from testing the NR200P in vertical GPU mode previously. So my preferred configuration has always been uh, radiator as intake and uh, exhausting the other direction. So it's it's more or less the same, even though it's flipped upside down. The small 2.2 slot XC3 is far from the best cooler for the 3080. So these temps are actually okay and reasonable for the car. And it was still hitting 1840 megahertz on the boost clocks. So personally, I would just go ahead and take those better CPU temps for a degree of GPU thermals. I mean, that's basically insignificant. And also with the top rad intake bottom exhaust option here, you can skip the dust filter as well for max airflows. Just make sure you have those fan grills at the bottom. And uh, this was the last uh, configuration that I set it up as. So I'm gonna flip all the fans after this. So at a high level, the GPU differences come down to the position of a 280 versus a 240 in our inverted mod. So if you do go with a 280, then you can expect a little bit more influence on the GPU and you can help the GPU more if you do the exhaust option. And the CPU thermals see an overall improvement with our inverted mod from using a better cooler and a full size 25 millimeter fan down here. But I, overall, I think both these setups between the Max and this inverted mod, they are actually quite comparable. 
visually the top of the inverted panel mod. It's a little bit proud of the case, but uh, personally, I can live with that. And that's one thing to consider though. But another thing is now the case displays from the right side, which uh, it can be good or bad depending on your setup. And there's still a good amount of space here if you have a slightly thicker radiator. And with this method, you do have about 63 millimeters max to the most prominent point on the riser cable that would interfere with. And I know there's, it looks like there's a lot of room here, but actually towards the back where it actually slots in, that's where your clearance is gonna come into play. So 63 millimeters right there. But uh, something like this combo over here, it's quite reasonable and offers good airflow as well. Now this case, it's upside down. And uh, some of you might have concerns about this GPU hanging this way. I'm not terribly concerned as long as your screws are tightened down uh, all the way. I mean, it's, there's not much play in it right now. And uh, one thing though, if you do travel with your NR200, I, I would take this card off, whether it's right side up or not, because there's a lot of leverage here if you were to be walking and swinging it around and uh, you know, such as going through an airport with it. And I personally would not want to stress the card too much when you can just pop it on. Cost wise, you're looking at less than $100 for the NR200P right now. And this PL240, it's among the most high priced AIOs right now. Even if you did go that route with the V850 SFX power supply, you're looking at about $425, plus a little more if you wanna upgrade that PCIe cable to a 4.0 riser cable. So even with a high-end cooler, you're still around the $450, $500 number that's been floating around for the max. But the beauty of it is that you're not bound to a specific component set. And if you have stuff already, this is only gonna cost you a little bit of time, like an hour or two, just to do the mods and the rebuild. And I do hope you'll consider trying it out because it's actually a really fun build. Hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Please like, subscribe, build links are down below. Enjoy your inversion. I'm gonna go enjoy mine. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.